In the United States Army, the MOS of a 91 Echo is an Allied Trade Specialist, otherwise a welder or a fabricator. Now before we dive into this general understanding of this MOS, make sure that you're subscribed to this channel. Maybe even think about enabling notifications so you get notified as soon as new videos go live, as well as live streams, and you can join the notification platoon. So now let's dive into the MOS of a 91 Echo and talk about some of the job responsibilities that are involved with being a part of this MOS. The primary duties of an Allied Trade Specialist are going to be things like fabrication, repair, modification of metallic, as well as non-metallic materials. This is an MOS that is available for active duty National Guard as well as reservists. And to get into this line of work in the United States Army, it is going to require you to get a high school diploma or a GED, as well as take the ASVAB and get a qualifying AFQT score to qualify for the United States Army. But specifically to qualify for this MOS in the United States Army, there's two options that could possibly get you this MOS. First option being if you can score at least a 98 in the general maintenance section of the ASVAB, or if you score an 88 in the general maintenance section, but a 92 in the general technical section, that will also qualify you for this MOS. So let's talk about some of the categories that make up those two different topics in the ASVAB. The general maintenance section is going to include three topics to get that score. That is going to come from auto and shop, mechanical comprehension, and electronics information. Now, if you're potentially going to be in that other category and you're concerned with your general technical score, well, that one is going to come from three sections as well. Those three sections being word knowledge, paragraph comprehension, and arithmetic reasoning. Now, the training for this MOS will include the typical 10 weeks of basic training. And from there, a soldier will go on to Fort Lee, Virginia for AIT, just like with some of the other MOSs I've covered, the information online is a little bit sketchy as to what the Army says compared to certain other websites related to the AIT. A little mix match on information. I think the Go Army website is actually stating this 13 weeks, but I've seen a lot of other sites uh, claiming anywhere from 18 to 19 weeks. Now, as far as my experience with this MOS or individuals that have been in that MOS, it's a lot of times individuals that are assigned to like a maintenance section or a maintenance platoon. And from even talking to a lot of veterans that were in this MOS, that's usually the common thing that ends up happening is you end up getting put into a maintenance platoon to be their welder. The last couple units I was in, they only really had one or two. So it's not really like a whole platoon of people who are in the same OS. You're probably just going to be combined with a lot of like wheeled mechanics. And that's one of the kind of big complaints I've heard from some people in this MOS is that you may just get assigned to like a maintenance platoon, have to do cross training to be a, like a wheeled mechanic on the side, and then occasionally do some of your welding, a fabricating kind of MOS related kind of duties. But most of the time, some people get just stuck being like a, a wrecker, you know, member of the wrecker team or or someone who is just fixing wheeled vehicles and then occasionally doing some fabricating welding. That was the case that I saw with a couple of my units where you know occasionally they'd be doing some welding and stuff but most of the time they'd be a mechanic. I know like when I was in Iraq they did a lot more welding because you would do like some fabricating to pieces for a vehicle or some welding for things that broke off or whatever the case might be but back in Garrison it was a lot of just being a mechanic really. Now if you're an individual that gets lucky and maybe is assigned to a specific uh, type of maintenance unit, then you might have a little bit more kind of flexibility on this. You might be able to do more fabricating, more of that welding stuff. But if you're just in a regular unit, there's a chance that you might just be cross-trained to be a mechanic and occasionally do some welding stuff because you're the qualified welder. But this job can have a lot of potential outside of the military to get jobs working in either like mechanic shops because you've been cross-trained a little bit on it or specifically that welding and fabricating stuff to work in some kind of fabrication shop or even some kind of maintenance shop that you know you're the welder for that maintenance shop. So this MOS can very easily transfer over. I believe even while you're doing this, you get certifications from the United States Army from you know the transfer over to the civilian side for like welding certificates. So if I have any viewers out there that are currently 91 Echoes in the United States Army or even previously were in the United States Army as this MOS, leave me some comments down below. I'd like to hear from you what it was you liked about the MOS, what you didn't like about the MOS, maybe even elaborate a little bit more on that example that I gave. It was there a lot of situations where you were just basically stuck being a wheeled mechanic and only occasionally doing some of your welding or fabricating job. If there's an MOS in the United States Army that you're interested in, make sure to leave those comments down in the comment section as well, as I like to look to those comments to try to get inspiration for what MOS to cover next Monday. So there you go, hope you liked this video and that little bit of a summary on the MOS of a 91 Echo. If you liked it, make sure to show some love by hitting that like button. Check out some links down in the description, some recommended videos over here. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Christopher Chaos and I will see you next time. See ya.